Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing this um, ball ball. This is from Johanna's Christmas, well it's from her printable ornaments page but also in her Johanna's Christmas book and uh, I thought I would have a go at this one. Now what I'm going to do to start with is to do some shadowing on the ball ball because I want it to look rounded and then I'm going to add some colour so it's going to be a little bit different. Oops, sorry, just knocking my cable, my lamp. This is the Dark Sepia from Faber-Castell Polychromos and what I'm going to do to start with is to put some shade, shadowing, all the way around the ball ball. What I want to do is to give the impression that this is a sphere rather than just a flat shape and in order to do that what I have decided to do is to make it look like there's light shining right in the middle of the ball ball so I'm gonna cast some shadow around the outside and then I'm gonna add the color to the design on the ball ball afterwards in the in an even tone across the ball ball and I'm gonna hope that it works I've never tried this before so uh, we'll see what happens so what I'm going, the idea is that we start off quite dark around the edge and then we fade in the colour. So you can see I'm going over the edge a bit more and then taking, making much more gentle pressure on the pencil as I bring it towards the centre. And I'm going to just do that all the way around. Now this does look quite dark but um, I think it'll work. I'm going to turn it round a little bit just make sure you can still see. It's quite difficult going around a circle without covering up half the ball ball so if I can turn it around hopefully you'll still be able to see what I'm doing. So you see I'm taking my pencil lines in the direction of the ball ball so rounded rather than doing little circles for this I'm sort of going round. I hope this is going to be the right proved to be the right technique. I'm just going to keep turning it. I'm sorry if that's going to be irritating. I'm just trying to keep it in shot and get an even colour around so that we gently fade it round. And I hope you can see that that looks like a shadow. Now the colour I've chosen, this dark sepia, is a slightly browny grey colour. I really like it for adding shadow to things because it's not just grey or black, which I think is a little bit harsh. I don't know, for me it just works, but obviously everyone has their own ideas. I know some people like doing, taking a, just a darker shade of what they're colouring, which is fine, but of course I haven't, there's lots of different colours on this particular item. So uh, it's it's just a little favourite colour of mine really. So I'm just going round and round. Sometimes I think it'd be nice to have, I notice some colouring books have sort of grayscale in them where this sort of thing's already marked in there. So uh, you don't have to do it but then you know it'd be good for learning but it's quite nice to, it, it's a nice achievement to actually get the effect yourself. I always think it's quite fun getting making shadows and effects with pencil because it's, I think I've always felt that they're quite limiting as a child you know I wouldn't I would find them hard work and uh, but now for this sort of coloring I much prefer them to sort of paint or pens or anything I think with paint I'm just too messy I can't stay in the lines I rush it too much and I just make a big old mess um, with pastels I tend to make a mess as well but slightly more successful. I had a bit of a disaster the other day with some pastel which I then managed to cover up with some pencil to rescue a picture. But I feel more in control of a pencil. I think it's probably just years of practice has helped me. But uh, and I'm, I'm pressing really gently now going towards the middle. I want to leave a white bit in the centre it might help you to mark the centre to measure it and find out exactly where it is which I didn't do which I'm slightly regretting but I'm hoping that I can sort of get it almost there 
So as you can see now, I'm trying to get that into the central shot and lined up for you. There we go. Um, we've got some shading on the um, ball ball. Now I'm going to add my colour. So the shading isn't particularly neat. There's a lot of lines in it, which I've noticed too. And I'm going before I add colour, I think I'm going to go in with a blending pencil. Now this is a um, a Prismacolor blending pencil. I just happen to have quite a new one, so I'm going to use that. But you can use all sorts of different brands. This Derwent is quite nice as well. Um, Caran d'Ache is nice, expensive, but nice. Um, and the Caran d'Ache blending stick as well works quite well. You can use blending solutions. Um, some people just blend with a white, or a, I wouldn't do that here because we want to apply other colours. It would dampen down the colour. Um, I'm just trying to get rid of some of the stripes in this that I have managed to produce. That's all. Um, what else could you use for blending? Um, some people use baby oil and a, and a bit of um, cotton wool or something. Now I would be very wary of doing that in a book just because I don't know whether it would leave a greasy patch or not. Um, but you can experiment on paper. This is a printout so obviously it's all up for experiments. Um, and different papers and things like that and different pencils work better with different blenders. So that is always a bit of a gamble as well. So it's a matter of playing sometimes with different things that you like, different techniques that work, things like that. And seeing what happens. I also found that in some books that I've used, the blending pencil blends the ink from the thing that you've printed. So this picture it blends so it smudges the picture so you have to be really careful so always test um, there's, if there's no test page in the back of your book try and find a little space somewhere to test it before you um, go mad and use it everywhere okay now I'm happy with that now so I'm going to go in with some green for our holly now choosing a shade of green is always quite fun um, I love greens so I've got loads of different shades but my one of my favourites, this isn't actually my favourite, the Permanent Green Olive, this is one of my favourites for Holly. So I'm going to do them all the same colour. Now what I'm going to do is ignore the fact that um, certain parts will be darker because of the sphere shape and just try and do them all the same pressure and hope that the shading that we've added will work and uh, give us the shape that we're looking for. So we'll see what happens. So just keep um, adding the colour. Now I'm not putting it down too dark here. I think I ought to push a bit harder as it ends up looking grey from the background. Now because these are Christmassy, it's nice to add sparkle. Um, I've got some glitter gel pens, I've got metallic pens, things like that, they're always fun. Or um, white pens to add snow effects, things like that. And if you think about a ball ball, which this is, quite often they'll have a little bit of glitter on or something like that. So think about what you might want to add depending on what you've got. You know, even if you've just got a little tub of glitter and some glue, you could um, have some fun. Now, if you're using a book, now glitter, you need to be careful, if you had a thick layer of glitter or sequins or something, you turn the page and you try and colour on the back, then your, um, I'm going to turn it around a little bit, which I might just, that's it, um, you, you might find that you have got a bumpy surface to work on on the other side, so be mindful of that when you're uh, sticking things on your page. If you use a glitter pen, I don't think there's enough glitter for it to really be a, a problem but because it's obviously got to get through the nib of the pen so it's quite a fine glitter but if you use actual glitter sometimes it's quite big the pieces and it might be it might create a rough surface now as I say because this is a printout it doesn't matter and actually in Johanna's Christmas the pictures are all single sided and they are perforated so you can tear them out which means you could it might work anyway in the book um, because of it being single sided 
or you might find that you can are happy to just rip it out and um, once you've done it or while you're doing it anyway so just have a little think about what uh, what might work for you now I'm I'm not shading the leaves because I think on my on a bauble when you buy one that's got a picture on it it's usually just quite a flat picture it's not shaded and I think it might be a bit confusing because we've shaded the bauble if the leaves are shaded as well and they look like they're catching the light in a different way to the ball ball it might mess with the impression of um, sort of um, shape somehow so I'm going to uh, just as I say do them an even color all the way around Now these are um, printable ornaments to hang on the Christmas tree. So, but I thought I might color, cut them out. I don't know how I'm going to cut out that bit though. I don't have a craft knife, and I, I'm very good at cutting off my cutting my fingers. Not off, thankfully not off. That's it, rather an exaggeration, but cutting my fingers. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that bit. But I thought I might cut them off and pop, use them on presents. Not either as a gift tag or just a little decoration on the gift bag or something like that, but uh, we'll see. Feels a bit early to be um, thinking about wrapping presents. I usually like to um, have my decorations up. I'm just going to sharpen um, before I wrap my presents. I've got a cable in my way. And... There we go. Sorry. Now that's a bit of berry not leaf so I'm going to ugh, try and remember not to do that um, let colour that in green it needs to go be coloured in red polychromos don't usually break I think it might be that my sharpener's getting a bit full I find that if the sharpener gets full of sharpenings then the leads break in the sharpener which is I don't really understand why that happens but it uh, I've noticed it does so make sure you empty it regularly that's of course if you use a barrel sharpener some people don't but I don't like having trying to find somewhere to put all my sharpening bits all the time <sighs> okay let's carry on through um, so I have got a different sharpener that I use sometimes which is my uh, it's a what's it called it's a Derwent sharpener and it's called a mini point or something and it's a rotary sharpener with a handle and it sharpens a really long point um, I've got one here you can compare it really long but um, it and it's good and it, the leads don't break which is why that one's been sharpened with it because it was being temperamental and kept breaking but I tend to save it for using with my Derwents because obviously it's been designed to use with Derwents but also sometimes with my Stedler Ergosofts because I like those being a nice sharp point because they hold a point well and I use them for fine work because they're a harder pencil so it's nice to have a sharp point for that sort of thing so we're nearly done with all of the leaves just the one at the top to do now you can see I haven't really got a method I'm just doing little it's quite hard to do because there's so many little pointy cornery bits it's quite hard to do a circular movement with the um, colouring circular movements are usually better because they look more even of course because this is all one shade you could always just do it with a pen right so that's that done and now I'm going to do the berries and I need a really nice red obviously um, um, I think I'm gonna go for this um, deep red So I'm just going to do them all the 
same shade of red. Now I'm thinking about what colour to do in the background of this bauble because I'm not going to leave it as it is, I'm going to go over it in a colour. Now I I think I want a lightish colour so that the holly and berries stand out. Again I'm not shading, I'm just doing an even tone of colour and as I said again a pen would work but of course the problem with the pen is it would cover over this, it might cover over this shading depending on the type of pen you have. Okay now background what are we going to do? It looks quite silvery at the moment with the CPR on there. So we could continue that and go over it with a grey. Um, or I could do a blue. Mm, yellow. Mm, maybe yellow. Yellow, yellow, yes. Right, so I'm going to go in with this yellow, which is my Naples yellow. And again, an even tone across it all and remembering every little bit like in there. And of course, over the top of the brown, it's going to look quite different to how it does when it comes towards the centre. noise outside, someone's moving house and there's a truck I can hear banging around outside. Now I haven't quite decided whether I'm going to take the yellow right to the middle or whether I'm going to leave a little white bit in the centre. So let's we'll see. I'm not sure this was a good choice. It makes it look a bit dirty. The browny colour. We'll see. So I'm going to sort of leave a white bit in the middle for now and then I'm going to decide once I've done all this edge just quite what I'm going to do with that centre. It actually looks better on the camera as far as I can tell than it does in real. <laughs> That's good. I think I would probably, if I was making this choice again, go for a light blue. Hey ho. So I'm going to reduce my pressure towards the centre. I still want a bit of yellow going nearly all the way, but just a bit lighter so we can emphasise that light in the middle a little bit. But I'm going to put a little bit of yellow across all of it. I've decided. There we go. Oh, it does look quite shiny, doesn't it? And it looks more rounded, I think, than it did before. Now, the last part we've got is this hanger here. See, I'm trying to figure it out. So this is the hanging loop and the metal bit that's holding it. And I think this might be part of the ball ball. Um, I'm just thinking what they look like. So yes, yeah, so I think this is part of the ball ball, so this is going to be this yellow colour. Gosh, it's very noisy seagull outside. And I'm going to use a bit of the dark sepia to give this top part some shape as well and some shade. So I'm thinking on this edge I'll just do a little bit and then some shadow from under these bits which will be sort of, would be hanging over the top because this part, if you imagine a ball ball, the part that sticks up at the top is usually round. So it's going to be shadowed a bit to make it look rounder. There we go. And now this hanging part I'm going to do in a silvery colour. So I'm going to start with a grey. Um, this is the cold grey 4, my Roman numerals. So I'm going to start with a dark bit here here and on this bit I think I should start dark here and here you can't really see can you what I'm doing sorry 
so I'm just doing a darker part at the bottom and then lighter as I go up so that it will blend in and then I'm going to go for the next one down which is the cold grey 3 and just take that colour up a little bit here and here and the same here go over the top of what I've done and then just gently go up a little some colour that's it and then this is the cold grey do so I'm just working through the box of colours going lighter and lighter so again I'm going over the top of what I did before then taking it up and I want it to look shiny on the top so there's some white and the same because this is the last one I'm using so I'm going to take a bit of up here so take some here and in from the side because we don't want this all to be white but a bit of white in the middle where the light might be catching it there we go that's me done I think with that one so uh, the silver looks a little bit pale um, it looks very different on the camera than it does on my paper so you might want to add a little bit more of the darker colour if you wanted it to stand out a little bit more now what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to think about um, some glitter and I have got this pen here which is a upside down Unibore Signo and it's a red glitter gel pen and I'm going to use it on the edges of each of the berries so where the black line is drawn just go around each one I don't know how easy it is picking it up on the camera it's quite it depends on where my light lamps falling I've only got a small screen so I can't really see everything that you see So I'm just going around the edge of all these with the glitter and hopefully I'm just going to tip it so I can check if I've gone around it all. Yeah, it's quite subtle but it is there. Now I would do the same with the leaves but my green glitter pen is quite, it's not the right colour that I really want. I'm thinking I could use silver instead so I'm going to go around the leaves in the silver glitter pen and just go around the edge of every single one like we did with the berries I hope my pen doesn't run out it seems to be working okay so say I'm not sure if you can see this but I'm just going over the top of the black lines now you could go over the veins and the patterns as well but I like to keep it quite subtle I also find with these my glitter pens the glitter does sometimes come off a bit if it gets rubbed or anything like that so always make sure you do this last I made a huge mistake in my first version of Johanna's Christmas where I did some glitter pen and then I did a pastel background and I rubbed it and I rubbed the glitter and it sort of smudged the glitter over the whole page which wasn't what I was um, trying to achieve now I'm in a predicament because I've got wet glitter pen. I'm going to have to turn it upside down. Um, so I um, I ended up with a, just a mess of red, dark red pastel and glitter smudged all over the page. It looked terrible. So uh, do take care with what you're doing with the glitter. Do it last. Now I also know that some people use something called stickles which I think sound really interesting and they add a glittery layer on top of the pencil that you've done which is see-through now that's quite appealing so because this pen obviously leaves a silver mark as well as the silver glitter but having a sparkly layer which um, which sits on top of the pencil to me sounds very appealing so I have been thinking about getting some but I don't really do glittery things until it comes to Christmas and my local art shop is closed at the moment and I think they sell some of them but I'll have to have a 
if my husband goes down to buy a few supplies because he he's an artist I would lump um, see if he can see if they've got any have a play I think they're also nice for things like um, wings of bees or dragonfly wings sort of thing so I'm nearly done now I think I'm just going to tip my head so I can catch it in the light and see yep that is all done and I quite like the effect of the silver um, I turn it around for you I'm going to tip it and I've got no idea if that is picking up the glitter in the light I think that will do it more there you can see it a little bit there we go there's that one finished so I hope you enjoyed that one um, thank you very much for watching and I do need to mention that if you want to know when my new videos come out I tend to release them every single day at 7.15 in the morning in UK time but what you can do is if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and you click the little bell then you will get a reminder um, when the videos come out to let you know what they are so then you can decide if you want to have a watch or not. So that's just a little tip for you if you want a reminder about when they come out. But um, thank you to everyone that's subscribed so far. I've now got over 300 subscribers which is absolutely amazing. I can't believe so many people are sort of subscribing which is fabulous. So thank you and I just hope that you're really enjoying the videos. Um, thank you for watching and happy colouring.